um, for us in our program, you know, we don't want to think we're carrying some flag for, uh, you know, the uh, non-big schools, so to speak. We, uh, we just want to be us. And uh, our guys have done an unbelievable job all year at kind of handling all the, the, the different distractions and different things that, uh, you know, we've kind of gone through, um, you know, with us, people trying to tell you how you need to play and what you need to do to have any chance. Um, but I think more than anything, our guys are just incredibly excited to be challenged against, obviously, the number one team in the country and Coach Saban and the Crimson Tide, who um, obviously they know everything about. And uh, so for us in the program, it's an incredible opportunity and a, and a great measuring stick in all that we've been doing. Coach Saban, we can ask you to unmute and give us an opening statement. Yeah, well, we're really excited about having the opportunity to be in the college football playoff and uh, playing in the Cotton Bowl is uh, something that we've experienced before, and it's been a first-class event in every way. And uh, I'd like to congratulate Coach Fickle and uh, his team at the University of Cincinnati for undefeated 13-0, and great accomplishments, uh, team plays, uh, great on offense, one of the top scoring offenses in the country. Uh, they're very good on defense. Uh, this will be a real challenge for us in every way, shape, and form. And uh, we're happy to have the opportunity to play against one of the top teams in the country. Now we'll go to questions to the media from the media. Use the raise hands function to ask your question. First question is going to come from Ralph Russo from the Associated Press. Ralph, unmute and ask your question. Thanks, Scotty. Uh, congratulations to both you um, coaches. Uh, if I can just address Nick, because I know Luke's been getting this this type of question a lot. Nick, you definitely, you know, look at college football. I think often it seems like you think of the health of the sport in general. Do you think it's good for the sport that a team like Cincinnati that has been considered at times sort of on the outside looking in because of the conference is getting this opportunity, that, that it shows that everybody who plays at the highest level of college football does have a chance to play for the national championship. Hey, I played at Kent state. All right. And I, I'd like to be you know, a major college, you know, player. I know it was the mid American conference, but you know, we played and tried to be the best that we could be. And um, you know, Cincinnati certainly deserves what, what they have accomplished this year. A very good conference. I mean, they beat Notre Dame, they beat Indiana, um, I, I have a lot of respect for the teams in their conference. Um, and I think it's good for college football that everybody and every conference feels like they have an opportunity. If they have success and uh, their team is consistent and performs in the fashion that the University of Cincinnati performed all year long. I mean, uh, how many undefeated teams are there out there? And it's very, very difficult to do. So you got to have a special mindset and a special group of young men to be able to do that. So I absolutely think that everyone who participates in college football division one level should feel like they have an opportunity uh, to get in the playoff. Our next question is going to come from Aaron Suttles from the athletic Aaron, unmute yourself and ask your question. Uh, Coach Saban, I know it's been early. I don't know how much time you've had to, to look, but what are your first impressions on the Cincinnati secondary? Uh, I haven't looked at them yet. I mean, um, I, I don't know what you guys think. We don't sleep or don't go to church or, you know, but we, we, we've got a banquet tonight for our team that we're trying to get ready for. But um, they're, they're very, very good. I mean, I'm a secondary coach. And if your pass efficiency defense is what theirs is, they got to be pretty good. Our next question will come from Tony with the Victoria Advocate. Tony, go ahead with your question. Hey, uh, for both for both coaches, um, you know, for Luke, what have you seen from uh, Jerome Ford since he uh, came came into the program? And, and Nick, what what do you remember from him as, as a running back um, at, at your program? Well, for uh, Jerome has. Uh obviously done an incredible job this year. I think last year um, the best thing that he did was kind of embrace uh, his role. And I think that was really probably a difficult thing for him walking in the door, but uh, he was able to kind of grow, grasp the people around him, recognize that, you know, there was more to this game than just carrying the football. And uh, I think it's kind of been, you know, enlightening for him to 
you know, have to struggle that first year here um, of not being able to play on the field. But I think it's really helped him in the long run because he's developed some relationships and some different things that really helped him in a, in a year like this where he's uh, played very well for us. Our next question will come from Steve Mouton. Steve, go ahead and ask your question. Uh, yes, uh, I I did have uh, one for each coach, if that's all right. I, I did want to ask Coach Fickle about getting ready for Alabama back in the 2014 college football playoff and really what you remember about that first. Uh, uh, it was brand new. The BCS was going away. What do you remember most about getting ready for the Crimson Tide, being a part of that Ohio State staff? I knew there was going to be an uh, incredible battle. Um, obviously, I, that's probably the – only time back to that I played him other than when I was uh, in college, we got beat by him in a bowl game back when, uh, oh God, that might've been 94 in the, uh, in the citrus bowl. Um, and uh, so I, again, all three phases of the game. I know I was on the, just on the defensive side of the ball when I was at Ohio state, but I did a lot of the special teams and obviously great programs play on all three phases of the game. And there's no weaknesses there. Their players play on special teams. I think we use, um, used their example back then, and we used their example here at the University of Cincinnati. And we take the, the amount of reps that their star players have played on special teams. Um, great indication for us that, uh, you know, a group that uh, or a team that plays on all three phases, and it's really important to them. And, and Coach Saban, if I could uh, get a comment or two about Bryce and how he's developed this year and maybe just overall as a team, how coachable has this team been for you this year, Coach? Uh, Bryce has played well for us all year long. Uh, I think he's made some incredible plays down the stretch here on our last couple games that, you know, certainly enhanced our chances of being successful in the game. And I do think in this last game, the players around him played a lot better, uh, which gave him a, a, a much better opportunity. Um, look, you know, this team was a young team when we started out this season. We've had a lot of adversity uh, to overcome. Uh, I think they've shown tremendous resiliency. Uh, and I think that, you know, in this last game, we seem to play to the standard that we wanted to play to against a very good team. And now it's going to be everybody's choice as to whether we can, you know, maintain that um, and be consistent with that moving forward uh, as we play in the playoffs. And it doesn't get any easier. It gets just you know, a lot more difficult, especially when you're playing, you know, any of the four teams, you know, in the playoffs are, are going to be tremendous challenges. Our next question is going to come from Michael from AL.com. Michael, please unmute and ask your question. Yeah, this question's for Nick. Just is there any update on John Mechie uh, and any, any other guys who got banged up in the game? Uh, John Mechie has an ACL and he'll be out. Our next question will come from Charlie Potter. Charlie, please unmute and ask your question. Yeah, Coach, uh, kind of piggybacking off of what Michael said, after the game you said a, a couple other guys may have been injured. Do you have updates on them? Uh, no, well, I, I don't have any injury updates. Um, we don't play for – when do we play? December 31st. So we don't have anybody that's been ruled out of that game that was injured in the game. Our next question will come from Mike Rodak. Mike, please unmute and ask your question. And for Nick, again, we saw JoJo Earl back in uniform, at least for this game. Just where does he stand with his rehab? And in those three weeks, is how much further do you think he could progress? Well, that's something we'll have to evaluate when we start practicing again. Uh, but he is getting to the point where he's dry land running and has some opportunity to come back and play in this game. We have a couple more questions before we close out this news conference. Our next one will come from Chip Howard. Chip, please unmute and ask your question. Chip? Okay. We will go to Christopher Heidel. Please uh, unmute and ask your question. Hi, coaches. Thank you for taking my, uh, my question. on your roster, you know, from the state of Maryland. 
uh, talk about one of them. I think I brought up um, one of his name is Braswell, Chris Braswell from Baltimore. What does he bring to the team during during the season? Uh, Chris is a backup uh, outside linebacker for us and plays on special teams. And um, he's been used in some pass rush situations uh, and has done a very nice job for us. All right, we're going to go back to Chip Howard. Chip, are you there? I am. Can you hear me now? Yes. Go ahead with your Great. question, please. Coach Fickle, I was wondering uh, about last year's experience in the in the bowl game against Georgia, and if you and the guys that are coming back uh, can take anything from that experience as you prepare for this game. Well, I think for sure. I think uh, you know you're all the experiences that you have in the past. You know, help you in the future, especially if you use them in the right way. And we have a majority of that entire team back. And uh, I think it, first and foremost, you know, just even the venue, we don't probably see a lot of the venues like that last year. And we'll see another venue that, you know, obviously is will be an incredible opportunity for these guys and something that they haven't played in. Um, I think so. We've at least have been there um, last year. And, and I think obviously playing against a great football team like Georgia last year, which just gives us that much more of a, an idea of what it is that we're facing. And, uh, you know, so those guys experienced those guys, uh, probably, like I said, 34 seniors, I think we got that all played in that game last year for, uh, in some way. Um, I would expect that they will be able to at least, you know, preparation wise, be able to you know have a better idea of not what we're going to see, because obviously it's a different football team, but, uh, the caliber and a lot of the things in, in the atmosphere of, you know, what we got to expect. Two final questions to close out. One from Chad Brendel. Chad, go ahead. Ask your question. Coach Saban, I'm just curious, putting the, the group of five, power five thing aside, so this is the first appearance in the, the college football playoff for Cincinnati and Michigan in this era. How good do you think it is for the sport or to maybe see some new faces, see some – some new names in the college football playoff. Good for who? <laughs> the sport. The sport. Uh, look, I, I think it's good uh, that we have uh, a balance uh, in, you know, college football in terms of people who can be successful. Uh, I think it's good for the fans uh, that they all have hope uh, that, you know, their team has an opportunity to get in the, you know, college football playoff. Um, I think the whole atmosphere of college football changed as I uh, brought up when we started this whole playoff. We would minimize the importance of bowl games, uh, which we have succeeded at. Um, and um, now everybody just talks about the playoffs and who's in the playoffs. And it used to be in college football, if you had a great season and you got to go to a good bowl game, everybody was excited. Players all wanted to play. Fans were excited and you know, that, that, that doesn't happen anymore. So you only have four spots for everybody uh, in Division One college football to have an opportunity to get in the playoff. So obviously, you know, a lot of fans are going to have hope that we can get in. Uh, it does create a lot of excitement. Um, but I'm not apologizing uh, for trying to have a program like a lot of people have tried to have a program that can get in the playoffs as many times as possible. I'm sure that's the goal of, you know, a, a lot of folks. So uh, even though I think that it might be healthy for the sport uh, because it's healthy for fans, um, as competitors, as coaches, we're all trying to get our team in the playoff uh, because that's sort of the standard of college football right now. Our final question will come from Jason Stam. Jason, please unmute and ask your question. Coach Fick, I'm going to leave this Per intentionally kind of vague here, but just when you look back, I'm sure you'll have more time, obviously, after the bowl and kind of recapping the season. But to this point, what do you feel like is the biggest thing you've learned about this season? I haven't been through the season so far. Every year is a different year. And whether you've got a team, a very veteran team coming back, a team that played really well last year, played, you know, obviously in a, in a big bowl game. Um, it's a completely different team with just how the attitudes and how the, you know, how they all, the, the people, guys mesh together, what guys are in, you know, new roles. Maybe they're a senior, maybe they're the captain. And just all those things, you know, going into the season 
is completely different than even last year when, you know, a lot of the core nucleus of what we've got is the same. And uh, so to me, this was probably my first experience at having um, a head coach, being in a head coach position, having some high end guys with some really, you know, expectations early on, um, you know, to play at the next level, to be all American, all, all the different things and how we had to handle that, uh, mesh all those kind of personalities and attitudes together and really kind of eliminate that selfishness to uh, be a team. And if we couldn't do that, uh, we were going to struggle. And so it was a, it was a different year for me. It was a different uh, group of guys, even though it was the same, probably core nucleus of them. I'd like to thank Coach Saban, Coach Fickle for joining us today. That's all the questions that